Sir Arnold Lunn, who had done so much to promote British skiing, died in 1974. Walter Amstutz, his lifelong Swiss friend and fellow ski mountaineer, wrote, Taking leave of him implies taking leave of an epoch which went with him to the grave. The British Ski Yearbook and its quarterly companion, Ski Notes and Queries, were combined to form the all-encompassing magazine Ski Survey, which Elizabeth Hussey would edit for 18 years. But now, skiing was about to enjoy a new golden age, and it was going to be bigger than ever before. Following the early success of tour operators like Colin Muris and Small, Erna Lowe and Inghams, there was a huge growth in skiing and a proliferation of ski tour operators who by now were taking more than half a million people away to the mountains each winter. Skiing was now so fashionable that almost every James Bond film had to have a fast action ski sequence. No brochure or ski film was complete without the obligatory powder snow sequence. Even America was joining the party. The 1968 Triple Olympic champion Jean-Claude Killy was busy promoting the sport. Not Val d'Isère then, but the new American resort served by United Airlines. The image was glossy and hence highly marketable. Gone was the emphasis on folklore and sleigh rides. It was a very exciting time to be part of the ski industry, to witness this complete explosion in the market. It was just extraordinary from being a very exclusive sport for the minority. Suddenly it was opening up to everybody more or less. You know, people who had just considered summer holiday as an option were putting ski holidays at the forefront. It was just a, a new era for skiing altogether and everybody talked about skiing on a social basis. You know, where are you going skiing this year? Chalet holidays really were taking off again at about the same time. Chalet is very different. I mean, people just would not um, accept the sort of standards that we were very happy with then. Uh, we, we all had to share a bathroom, so there'd be about six bedrooms per one bathroom. And of course, by the time you actually got into your bath, it was completely cold, and you could hear everything in the next door room. By the late 70s, 80s, Everybody wanted to be seen in bright yellows, acid yellows, peacock blues, shocking pinks. And of course now we wouldn't be seen dead looking like that on the ski slope, but then it was, you know, absolute must to be seen looking as flashy as possible. You know, you had to be seen in a certain type of skier. If you considered yourself expert, you had to have competition splashed all over your ski, and it had to be X centimetres above your head. There were some established tour operators in the mainstream anyway at that time. There was Horizons, Thompson, Swans, Global, those big operators had been going a while and they were joined by such companies like Nielsen's Enterprise, 